Hey, what's up guys? Dean Hansen here. Uh, before I get into this video, I just want to mention that I think this is my 100th YouTube video, which is kind of crazy. Uh, it might be my 99th. Uh, sometimes YouTube shows that I have 98 videos, and sometimes it shows that I have 99 videos. I didn't take the time to count them, but maybe it's 100. I don't know. That's irrelevant to this project I'm working on. Uh, today I'm going to be going over a Windows PC build that I'm working on currently. I just got it finished a couple days ago. And this build is specifically designed to compete with the iMac back here for video production, and, but mostly audio production, running all this music equipment. Uh, you can't see most of it, but I've always been on the Mac side of things. I've kind of felt like I had to be. I do like Mac products, Apple products, um, but sometimes you just want a PC to do a lot of other things that Mac doesn't do very well, and uh, it would be nice to just have one solid unit. I've kind of been a bit of a a downer on Windows. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of Windows computers, and they just they don't perform the well as well as as well and as consistent as Mac does when it comes to video uh, and or music production specifically. Uh, we're going to put that to the test today. This iMac back here is the 21.5 inch 2017 i5, uh, Intel i5, 1 terabyte fusion drive, 8 gigs of DDR4, 24 megahertz RAM, and uh, we're going to build a Windows computer to compete. I think most people are under the impression that you can build a Windows computer for significantly cheaper than a Mac that will blow it away and in some cases you might be right if you're just matching spec for spec you're correct you can build an i5 uh, big old tower uh, with the exact same specs of this Mac for a lot cheaper than this Mac however that's not going to come with a 4k monitor it's not an all-in-one design it's not going to have all the accessories built in and a nice clean beautiful design and it's also not going to be running OS X, which is going to be more sluggish. Now, I know a lot of people are going to fight me on that, but that's just the damn truth. I've used enough Windows computers and enough Mac computers to understand that Windows requires a lot more power to get the same results. All of that said, let's just go into my build. This is going to be kind of a casual video, probably a two-parter when I get into software and just overall performance. This is more just the build. We're going to talk about the actual parts I used. Every single choice I made was made with a budget in mind. I really wanted to come in significantly cheaper than the Mac. This Mac is about $1,500. If I couldn't come in much cheaper than the Mac and performing at the same level or better, then there was no reason to do the project. So every single component was, I was very, I was trying to buy the cheapest thing. This isn't one of those builds from somebody who's building like a $3,000 tower. This is a realistic build for me, so every single part, yeah, I, my focus was just as cheap as possible. A buddy of mine from work came up with the idea to build it inside a server chassis, which is, this is my case here, um, because I was bitching and complaining about how Windows has to be built in these big ugly towers and that feels like 15 year old technology, why can't things be built nice and uh, like, like uh, Apple does it. And he came up with the idea to buy a rack-mounted server chassis, which is what we have here for my case, which will be just rack-mounted into my uh, equipment, which will have a really clean, nice, efficient feel. And that will kind of help me overcome the uh, annoyance uh, that uh, Windows has when it comes to clunkiness, loud, old-looking parts. So I decided to use this server chassis. Uh, it was about $75. Every single part we used was brand new all the way down to the mouse and keyboard because the Mac does come with a really nice wireless mouse and keyboard. So again, we're trying to replace this guy. And we actually wanted to replace it for how much I could sell it for, which is probably around $1,200 on eBay. Uh, and we want to come in significantly lower than that. So. I'm going to jump the gun a little bit here. This build came in at around $700, less than half of the iMac. All right, so back to the chassis here. The reason I chose this one is I wanted some USBs up front. There's a lot of different types of chassis to pick from. And I also, which was really important to me, is I wanted to be able to put in a full-size power supply. 
So if you are building something similar to this, be careful because a lot of these two u these two u units, which is a this will take up two rack unit spaces, um, a lot of them will not accept a full size power supply. So that was the first criteria is I want to be able to put in a full size power supply um, and have a two unit. Three was a little bit too big. One a one one unit would have been awesome, but I would have had to use laptop parts. So this is the compromise. This is the Goldilocks server unit for me. The way we knew this would take a full size power supply is there was no power supply restriction in the specifications. A lot of them will say PS2 or PS3 power supply. That means a full unit is not going to mount inside. Um, if you look at the back of the unit, you will notice that the standard mounting brack or mounting posts for a standard power supply will have this configuration. And so if the unit doesn't have any power supply restrictions, it doesn't mention a power supply if you're looking at the case specifications and you can look at the back and it looks like that, chances are it's gonna fit. You can see that a full size power supply is gonna just barely fit. It's gonna be flush with the top and bottom of the case. <clears throat> this particular unit actually has four bays, four 3.5 inch hard drive bays which I like because as an audio video guy um, you tend to use up a lot of storage uh, I took these two these these are removable they, they go in like so um, I removed two of them and, and that's just for airflow through the case I did spend ten dollars extra and upgraded my fans this particular unit has system fans um, I had to upgrade them because these ones plug directly into the motherboard and the ones that come with the unit plug directly into the power supply so they're constantly on full blast and the noise was just ridiculous. Once you have the case picked out, um, you got to make sure you're going to be able to fit the motherboard of your choice inside that case. This particular case only takes micro ATX motherboards so that kind of limited me a little bit so before I get into the motherboard I want to talk a little bit about Firewire most of my equipment and a lot of standard uh, audio interfaces are still using Firewire today however the computer industry has kind of left Firewire behind um, replaced with Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3 that's kind of replaced Firewire you can get Firewire adapters for Thunderbolt. Long story short, I needed to build a PC that either had Thunderbolt or Firewire. That is not easy to find. If you are looking things up and trying to find a motherboard that has native Thunderbolt, you're going to have a hard time. There are a couple. They're going to be a lot more expensive. And that's another area where you can see that the Apple iMac really has a hand up on the PC industry. Is They, they throw two Thunderbolts on their iMacs. Their lowest end iMac has two Thunderbolts. Their higher end iMacs have four Thunderbolts. That's unheard of in the Windows industry and that's a problem. It's like Windows isn't even trying to compete for the audio video professional. That said, there is an easy fix because I couldn't find Thunderbolt at a reasonable price. I ended up buying this uh, PCI Express uh, 2 port 1394 Firewire PCI card um, this was $24 and uh, pretty straightforward. It gives you Thunderbolt 8 as well as a Thunderbolt 400 and an 800. And uh, as long as your motherboard has PCI card slots, which I'm sure it'll probably have a couple, you'll be able to use something like that. And you can see that this PCI card is a low profile card and it fits nicely inside the 2U server chassis, which is nice. So now we have Firewire in our unit. The power supply I chose was one that was on sale. It's only 450 watts. It'd be nice to have something like a 600, but again, I really had to focus on budget, budget, budget. And uh, this guy was on sale for 50% off. I got it for $24 or $25, I believe. The motherboard I decided to go with was a Gigabyte B360M DS3H 
I'm not sure if you can see that in the camera. Um, and the uh, main reason I chose this motherboard is realist realistically was the fact that it was $69, which was a pretty good deal. And it supports the 300 series 8th uh, gen pro Intel processors. So it has the 300 series chipset that supports the 8th gen Intel processors. So you got to be careful when you're buying your setup. Um, make sure that uh, if you're trying to get an 8th gen processor in here, an, I, an Intel 8th gen i3, i5, i7, um, make sure they support the, make sure that the, the motherboard supports the 300 series, has the 300 series chipset or it won't work. Um, they both have the 1151 socket but a different chipset. So the processor was the one area that I really could not go cheap. Um, if you're trying to run a Windows computer to run video production and uh, music production, um, you cannot skimp on the processor. Get the absolute best processor you can get your hands on. This processor was probably 50% of the price of the entire computer. But it is Intel's most recent 8th gen i7-8700 processor. Runs about $300. And uh, so far has been running really, really good. It only uses 65 watts. So it's really quite efficient. And I've been really happy with it so far. One area where I did have to compromise was with the RAM. Um, the 24 megahertz. DDR4 RAM is really quite pricey right now, so I've only got a single gig, eight gig stick um, installed right now. Um, but there are four ba there are four RAM slots in this motherboard, so I can continue to add RAM over time. Haven't noticed any performance issues yet, but this single stick of four gigabytes of RAM is about $150. So. There, there's not much wiggle room you can do there. You might be able to get away with four gigs of RAM, but I would not recommend it. I think eight is the absolute lowest that I would go. So let's move on to our uh, boot disk or our hard drives. We actually have three hard drives in this unit. We're going to start with the M.2 Corsair MP500. It's a 120 gig hard drive. It, it uses a new, brand new M.2 um, connection. Uh, so it's not SATA. It's really, 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 really fast. And it's really, 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 really small. It's way down in there. I'll try to get a shot of it. Um, it's significantly smaller than my RAM stick. And that's my boot up disk. That's my hard drive where I'm going to, where I've, where I've, inst I'm going to install all my software. I'm going to install my OS, which is going to be Windows 10 Pro. Now my other drives where I'm going to store all my larger files are going to be going on this 2 terabyte Seagate 7200 Barracuda. Uh, went a little bit up in price to get a nice high quality Barracuda. I struggled a lot with storage. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I figured this is going to compete mostly with the Mac. Now this is a 1 terabyte Fusion drive. Now I've got 2 terabytes of 7200 and 120 gigs of M.2 SSD. This other hard drive here is just a random 750 gigs, 7200 RPM hard drive I had laying around, so I just decided to throw it in to have a little extra storage. So essentially that's it. That's the majority of the unit. We don't have a graphics card yet. Have not really felt the need to get one yet. Um, and then we also had to get on the internet, so I went really cheap and I spent $15 on Amazon for this guy and it's just a Wi-Fi antenna you know plug this in and you can uh, access Wi-Fi networks and it was about $15 and finally we had to have a mouse and keyboard wireless setup so we got this guy which is also uh, <laughs> Amazon special for uh, uh, $13 so like I said going to try and get as much speed and power as I possibly can with the lowest possible budget. Could not go cheap on the processor. Could not go any possibly any cheaper on the RAM. Um, you know, of course, if we were just building our dream machine, we would have you know terabyte M.2 and stuff like that. However, 
we had to be realistic. We're going to see how well over time that this unit can compete with the iMac. I'm going to talk a lot more in the part two of this video about just the overall experience I've had. We're going to talk about software because we can't have Final Cut Pro, we can't have ScreenFlow. Um, we're going to talk about license transfers from Mac to Windows, um, for Ableton Live, Reason, and we're going to get into all that. One complaint so far is the fans are just kind of noisy. They're right here when I'm working. They're, they're just right up in my face, and I notice them every time they rev up. One cool thing about a Mac product, or an Apple product, uh, is you almost never hear the fans in there at all. They're just super clean, super quiet. I think I covered everything I wanted to in this initial uh, build video. Thanks for watching. Stick around for part two.